Hi, I'm Chris Bullock. My wife Carolyn and I are owners of the Wandering Bull LLC. We're one of the country's largest Native American craft suppliers. We sell a wide range of products including craft materials, contemporary art, and antiques. My parents started the business in 1969 when we were kids running around at powwows. And more than 50 years later, our family business is still going strong. Today we're going to work on some rawhide painting. We're going to make a reproduction knife sheath. This style of knife sheath is used by the crow people. It's done on rawhide, very stiff, it's laced down the side and painted front and it's got this flap. This guy was made with um, bison rawhide. A little bit of fur is still on the inside. I left that intentionally. And there's the back side. So we're basically going to start off with soaking a piece of rawhide so it's soft enough where this paint that we're going to use is going to be absorbed into the surface of that sheath. We don't want the paint to sit on top. If we painted that sheath when it was um, dry and hard, if we painted this sheath then, the paint would want to flake off over time. We want basically the hide to absorb the pigment that we're going to use. And we're basically going to use the pigment paints that we sell at the Wandering Bull. I have a variety of colors. Got we sell these in one ounce containers. And you can mix it with glue. The people out west had access to prickly pear cactus and that was the sizing. They've used fish glue and that's the sizing. Basically it's going to make that paint be permanent. Um, I'm going to use egg whites today as uh, I'm up here in the east and don't have access to the prickly pear cactus. So we're going to substitute that, um, that sizing with, and I have a dish here. So I basically just have egg whites and a dish of water. So to start off, I've pre-soaked this piece of rawhide. This is commercial cow. So I think my sheath's gonna fit nicely here. I'm gonna fold it over so I get enough room. So depending on the size of your knife, really depends on how big you want the sheath. These sheaths were fairly consistent in size, not much bigger than this. And this guy's about three and a half inches wide. Six and four. We're about 10 inches long, not including the little flap. So I'm going to hold it up right next to the edge of my rawhide. Rawhide and leather is expensive. Don't like to waste it. I'm going to fold this guy over. So, and I want to add the flap to the back piece of this rawhide. So I'm going to trace that flap. I'm going to be drawing it right across the top. So. If you order rawhide from us, we sell it by the square foot. Um, and this is what we would refer to as bleached, so it is on the white side. Um, there's opaque rawhide, which would be difficult to paint on. I mean, it would work, the properties are the same, but it'd be more opaque. You want this bleached color. It'll give you good contrast to your paint. Probably gonna square that top off. So what we're gonna do, we'll paint it first and then go ahead and poke the holes on the side. And it'll need two holes in the top for the tie of the flap. So I think we're gonna start and we'll do the, the red pigment first. So I'm going to take the red, I'm going to 
tap some into the, the little dish on my tray. Paint goes a long way. So if you just use water with this paint, eventually when it dries, it will flake off. But by using the egg whites, it's going to make it solid. And I'll need the water to get, really get it moving. So at this point, that, that potted paint is certainly now a paste. I'm going to add some more egg whites. Fairly thick. I want it to get nice and thick. I want, it, I want the paint to be thick and, let me say, gooey, opposed to thin and runny. All right, as you can see on the original one here, has a border of green, a border of blue, one clear border, and then the red pigment. So let's roughly sketch out that design. And the triangles are roughly about four inches. So, and I want that point to be my center. So let me mark the center of the sheath, who will be roughly there. And note the red does not travel all the way to the edge. So I have the blue diamonds, and they do travel to the edge. So we'll do that, do that. That. There are my blue diamonds, and the red will basically just come right to the edge. And then we'll follow the edge up. So I soaked the rawhide for, oh, half hour beforehand. So the surface of it is a little damp and will want to um, absorb that paint. And these are designed, there's a little sample of other painting I've done on leather. So basically, this is a piece of elk antler. And I'm gonna work that paint into that surface of that hide. So you want to work it while it's still wet. I've worked in some of the paint. I'm just going to work with the egg white on top. Smooth that guy out. So that hide's basically absorbing the paint. It's not going to sit on the surface. It's my basic color. A little bit of red on the flap. And a little. So I might as well paint that red while I'm at this. I'm going to leave room for the border as well. I have plenty of pigment on the, the two diamonds here. So I have the red um, paint in place. I'm fairly happy with it. I've got it rubbed in. I applied another coat of that um, egg white on it. I'm gonna clean my brush.
I think at this point, I'm gonna move on to the dark blue color. And we'll pull out blue. All right, got that fairly good consistency. Gonna put some egg white into that. So the blue I have, I am, I'd like to darken it up a little bit. I'm gonna use a little tiny bit of black. Black is a stronger color than the blue and will wanna be the dominant color. So I'm just gonna put in a little bit Really happy with that. So if we look at the diamonds, they're wider here at the bottom. They get narrower toward the, towards the top. And I have a border, the diamonds, and another border, and a little bit on the flap. Certainly make those diamonds wider at the bottom and get narrow towards the top. I'm going to switch paintbrushes a little bit. I want to get a little more detailed here. Don't measure everything out. You don't need to, you, you do want to be neat, you want to be symmetrical, and but you know there is a certain point that you want everything to flow nicely. All right, let's work on the detail on the flap. Looks like the red diamond will be outlined with blue. Fairly happy with that. And I certainly want a finer edge tool to work that paint in. So by working working it with the antler tip, it's also Evening out my paint. You can see in this area a couple of little bubbles and so I'm just gonna straighten the lines, get rid of the high spots, get rid of the excess paint, and work that paint right into the surface of the of the rawhide. So the rawhide boxes to my right are done in the same fashion as I'm doing right now. Much bigger example. Note the paint on the flap drying up quick. There's not a lot of pigment in there, so I'm going to still work it in. I'm going to go back, add a little more um, egg whites to the pigment, give it a second coat, and um, just even out the paint now that I have scratched it in place. We're using um, the powdered paint, for example, today, but you could also use acrylic paint. Acrylic paint would work totally fine. Same process. You want to soak the rawhide. You want to paint it and apply the tool and force that acrylic paint into the surface. So the same process. You don't need the egg whites because when that acrylic paint dries, it's going to dry rock hard. Um, so I'm fairly happy with this. I'm going to give it another rub in. So now I'm satisfied with the blue. Blue is dry. 
It's been rubbed in twice. I've applied that second coat of the egg whites. Have a little yellow in here and a little green. The sheath's probably, I made it 30 years ago. It's had plenty of use. The color's faded. Compared to rawhide wise, it's, it's yellowed up. It's aged nicely. I like things like this. This is nice and white and bright. So it's hard to tell the pigment colors, but there is yellow and there is green. So I'm gonna start with, let's go into the green and cause I'll mix a little yellow in with my blue and it's got the green border around it as well. I'm gonna switch brushes. Get some water in there. So, my green here I think it's a little bright. I'm gonna take a, a scoop of the blue. See if I can tone that, that green down a little bit. Once again, the, the blue would be a dominant color to the green, so it wants to override it. So you wanna basically just use very little of that darker color to tone down the green. So let's apply the green to the top of the diamonds. It's still pretty green. We're going to work that color down a little bit. This lime green we're going to scrape into place and then we'll add another color on top or another layer on top and we could make that next layer darker than what we have right now and this outer edge has green on it as well i'm going to work these colors in i'm going to work the green in Let's darken this green up again. We'll apply another um, layer of paint and another layer of the egg white and see if we're, see if I'm satisfied with that color at that point. So you can see in my tray how I've worked my paint around to achieve the color that I'm looking for. Scrape that paint in for the last time. Now our green is all in place. Two coats, um, have it rubbed in place, satisfied with the color. Let's move on to the yellow. Just a little bit of yellow is required. Have all the yellow in place, and now we're going to rub that in. So I get that yellow rubbed in place. I'll put another coat on that. Now I'm fairly confident that I'm, the pigment's all dry. So next step is fold this guy in half. We'll mock out the holes. these lacing holes and uh, we'll punch them, run a lace through and our project will be finished. Instead of measuring out the holes, I'm going to use my thumb. Let's start off. Let's 
start off about a quarter inch from the top. Do some measurement. And for these guys, for these two holes, we're only going to poke it into the front surface. So I'm going to hole there and a hole here. That will line up nicely with the um, with our lace holding that flap in place. So this is a um, hole punch. It's a rotary hole punch. You can adjust the size of the holes needed. Pretty handy tool. Um, obviously they didn't have this tool 200, 150 years ago. So I get a piece of brain tan deer skin. Oh, and it's obviously longer than my knife sheath. I'm gonna tie a knot at one end. I'm gonna make a loop, put the tail through the hole, pull that guy tight. That little tail hanging, it's fine with me. It's about, oh, an eighth to a quarter inch thick. I'm gonna snip the end to a point as I need to use this to lace the sheath on. But before we do that, we're going to put the little lace on the flap as it will be on the inside of this rawhide knife sheath. So we're going to go from the inside to the out. So for this one, let's we'll start this first one. Let's start the knot in the back. So I like my point. Make a point on that leather. Get it wet. Twist it. Nice and hard. Go through, pull it tight. If your lace were short or broke while you were lacing it, I would just tie a knot just like we did here end it here, take a new piece of leather, put another knot, and I'd hide them all to the back. Put that guy over. Same knot as I did in the front or at the top. I'm going to just make a loop, stick that tail through the loop, pull it tight, Tie the flap down. Close that edge. I'm going to just snip off the excess. So a crow style knife sheath, painted on rawhide. Use the powdered pigment paints. Here's one that's 30 years old. Note the patina. I trimmed off that little excess over flap. The backside, this backside is plain. This one is painted blue. 
Here's another style knife sheath, done the same fashion, the same way. This one's done on, I believe, bison. Flip it over, a little paint on the back. So, you wanna make a crow style knife sheath? Here you go. This Apache style knife sheath, it's done in the same process as we already talked about. And here you go, several knife sheaths painted on rawhide. Good luck painting, have fun. Thanks for watching our videos. You can order supplies and learn more about Native American crafts by visiting our website, wanderingbowl.com. On our Facebook and Instagram pages, you'll find weekly specials, a schedule of upcoming events, and interesting historical facts about Native American culture. We not only sell supplies, we use them ourselves, as you've seen in these videos. And if you ever need help with an order or a project, you can always give us a call at 1-800-430-2855. We'd love to hear from you.